Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are the reason I believe. You are the one for me. The very one for me. You are the reason why I live. You are the reason I live. You are the one for me. The very one for me. Why should I fear when I have you? Surrounded by your love. Everlasting love. Why should I care? What people say, they don't know what you mean to me. You are the reason I live. You are the one for me. The very one for me. Father, Lord, I thank you for the life of your son. Jesus Christ, I praise you for a fulfilled life. You may be seated. The lion himself. My 31st, 31 years life journey with my husband. TBJ, the man in the synagogue. That is the name I fondly call him. TBJ, the man in the synagogue. Our life was not without trials and tests. But I, as a Christian, I know that trials and tests cannot break the one who relies on God's strength. You taught me to know that tests and trials are the soils on which our faith flourishes. Your vision became more clearer to me with time and without distractions. As I watch, see you labor with passion, with dedication, hard work. To grow from eight membership assembly, sitting on a mat, to a wooden chair, and to the level which we are today, all to the glory of God. You have groomed me to the woman I am today. And in your word, for gold to become gold, it must pass through fire. I stand here today to say thank you for choosing me. Thank you for loving me. For caring for me. Nurturing me. Thank you for being a good father to our children. You are not just a father who merely provides. But a father who wants the best and gives out his best at all times. I 
I thank you for shielding me from those who came to our home with ulterior motives. And because you could not give in to their ill desires, you are bent on soiling your noble names. Yet, you were undeterred. I thank you for being you, TBJ, my love. You are unique in every sense. That's the man who does not understand the word impossible. He doesn't understand the word impossible. And above all, I thank you for using your life, spending your life on things that will outlive you. We will keep the fire burning. We will keep your dreams alive by God's grace. You are the man I loved. I was proud. And forever, I will be proud to be your wife. You have made it clear to us all that this is the job you are born for. You are living for. And you will die for. Though you are not dead, I know that. You are not dead. But this you did on your last moment on earth. Your passing was so peaceful. Yes, it was so peaceful. I've crested you forever in my heart. But I know that God Almighty has you for his keeping. So we meet to part no more. It is very sad. Very, very sad that I, Evelyn, may not be able to see you physically again. The children may not be able to see you physically. Your spiritual sons and daughters, the big synagogue family, and your loved ones in the world. But it's also comforting that you have gone home after service. So sleep on, my love. Sleep on, my God's general. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm so proud of my dad, TB Joshua. Um, dear Daddy, it's hard to put in words how remarkable a person you are. I had the good fortune of having you as a father who sowed the seed of imperishable values of hard work, discipline, generosity, and a host of other virtues too numerous to recount. I remember the countless times you called me in boarding school, asking me about my favorite subjects, how my exams went, and for some reasons, asking me to predict what I think I got in every test. I truly appreciated that you took your time out of your busy schedule to call me. It was not just a responsibility for you, but you truly, truly cared about my education, and you really loved listening to me talk about school. I will not be what I am today if not for your encouragement, your support, and your formidable dedication. You emptied yourself for your family and served humanity. Practically everything I know about the love of God, I learned from you. From a tender age, I was excited and eager to hold the microphone for my dad every Sunday service. And after every Sunday service, he kept on asking me, how is the service today? And he told me that the work of God is so beautiful to do. This became really part of my growing up experiences with him. I also remembered when he took me to his altar and he told me both of us to kneel down on the floor and we prayed for 45 minutes on the floor 
my legs were hurting. He later told me that the flesh is weak, but the, um, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Indeed, you lived a prayerful life. A prayerful life is one of sacrifice, and you truly lived that life to their last moments on earth. I am in awe of your love and fear of God, and I really truly understood that at a very young age, my dad would give his time, his dedication for this work. I would truly miss your conversations with me on a daily basis about life and moral. Daddy, as it was typical with you, your conversation always retained a sense of humor and mystery. If anyone lived a fulfilling and yet deliberately enigmatic life, it was you. I will truly I will truly miss your wisdom, your knowledge, your mystery and your humor. You have lived a life of unwavering com com commitment to passion and service. I have no reservation to say that my dad had the biggest heart that I know of and he was a true humanitarian to this generation. What a feat you have left for all of us to live up to. I'm so surprised to hear about all the condolence messages from people around the world concerning your compassion. Even some people I've never met in my life, they all testify to your compassion and your humility. What a life you lived, such a legend and an exemplary light. I believe that by God's grace and your peculiar time, your peculiar sense of time, that while we were not ready, you were fully prepared for the call home. Rest in peace, Daddy, your loving daughter, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Promise Joshua. And here is my tribute to my dad. As devastated as I was upon hearing about the news of my dad's passing, I can't say that I was completely unprepared for that day. Growing up as a biological daughter to a man like Prophet T.B. Joshua, my dad raised me to understand that he was on a mission in this world. For him, life on earth was spiritual warfare, not a place to get too comfortable like it was home. He essentially lived each day like it was his last with most of his time spent at his prayer mountain, utterly focused on executing an assignment that only him seemed to be in the know of what the instructions were. Since I became more socially aware and more inquisitive about my dad's life, I realized that the implication of such a lifestyle was that once he was done accomplishing what he was sent for, he will be called back home to the one who sent him. I must say that my dad did an excellent job at preparing me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically for a moment like this. I remember the conversations we had, particularly last year, when I spent over a year with him at his prayer mountain, right before he eventually released me to pursue my master's. He said to me, before I release you, you have to spend nothing less than six months with me. Then you can go and do whatever you want to do. I ended up spending over a year with him. I saw him almost every day of that year. He'll tell me about how I needed to strengthen my relationship with God, carried me along at least three out of the countless times that he dedicated to prayer in a day. Most mornings, he would wake me up, would do our morning exercise routine, and we would have conversations about the most random topics. There was no aspect of my life that he didn't try to leave a positive footmark on in that year. By the time he was done with me and ready to release me back into the world, there was this sense of fulfillment that I observed in both of us. In retrospect, the memory of this moment is a place where I find solace now that he has passed on. I remember our trips to Arigidi Akoko, Ondo State. He made sure that I was present when we, um, he was visiting the old people in town. He would ask me to kneel with him as we kindly asked the elders to accept our gifts. They would pray for us 
he would look at me and say, this is the good life. I remember our trips from his new site to his old site. I would fall asleep in the car, and he would always make a point to wake me up to ensure that I was observing my environment to see the reality of life for thousands of Nigerians. He'll tell me never to think that I was more deserving of the life that I had as a result of the grace of God in his life than the people that were on the streets. For me, this was an important lesson that shaped my perspective and daily interactions. Lastly, Daddy, I want to say thank you for being such an exceptional role model. Your life is a living testimony of how God can raise a young boy from an underprivileged background with so much passion and zeal for God's work and use him in extraordinary ways. It is also a testimony of the extent to which one person's life can make such a massive positive impact in the world with the thousands of lives that bear witness to the positive mark that you've made in their lives and in this world. I'm so proud to be your daughter, Daddy. So we'll meet again in heaven, Dad. From Pom Pom, as he usually calls me, your twin. Hello, everyone. I'm Hart. I'm Prophet TV Joshua's daughter. And I would like to start by thanking everyone for coming out and celebrating my father's beautiful life. On that dreadful day, the 5th, June 2021, my father, Prophet T.B. Joshua, departed this world to join his father in heaven, and it hasn't been the same for me again. I don't have many words to express how much I love and miss him, me, daddy's girl. From a tender age, he showed me that his love for me was immeasurable, and I will forever love him for that. In the world where men were seeking fame, my father had a dedicated group of men, women, boys, and girls who loved the very ground which he walked on. He was clean in heart, in body and mind, and I shall never forget the special smile, caring heart, and forever warm embrace. Knowing that I had someone who I could call on any time and pour out my all to was one of the greatest parts about having a mighty man as a father. My father was an extraordinary person. He was not only the best role model, but he volunteered in his free time. He wasn't okay with only being a wonderful father, but he gave back to the world and helped those who were in need. As we may all know, my father's notable feature was his charisma. He could lift any room he walked in with just his presence and a smile. And not only did he apply this in his work as a televangelist and philanthropist, but in his daily life as a father. My father always had a smile on his face regardless of any situation and would never let anything trouble him. He was a jovial man, full of fun and laughter. He played uncountable jokes with me and my sisters and sadly is leaving a hole in our hearts which no one can fill. One of my favorite memories with my dad was the time where he got me my first bike. I was elated and bouncing with joy. I had been pressuring him countless times for a bike, but he pushed me aside, so I guess he didn't want to get it from me. I tried my best to make him aware of the fact that I was angry by making odd faces in front of him. He was provoked by the fact that I, I was provoked by the fact that he would hug me irrespective of the tantrums I threw and still show me all the love and attention he did. So on the day I saw the big, beautiful purple bike in front of the car which had just dropped it. I ran directly to his room and gave him a big hug, showering him with thanks. I cherish every moment I had with my father, and I know he's smiling down at us right now. I'm saddened that death took him away from us, but God said, in all things, we should give him thanks. His death has left a scar in our hearts, but his legacy will stand in our lives. I feel so grateful to have had as much time as I had with him, and I will always remember having the most ambitious and remarkable father. My father was the most important person in my life, and I feel heartbroken to no longer have my father and spiritual figure with us. His memory will not only carry on in my heart, but in the hearts of everyone, lucky enough to have known a delightful and astonishing man like Prophet T.B. Joshua. I am confident that we will meet at the feet of Jesus on the resurrection morning.
Emmanuel. My name is Brian Moshi, and uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua is my spiritual father and also my father-in-law. I'm married to his beautiful daughter, Sarah Joshua. And I have a few words to say to, to in tribute of my father in the Lord. I've never met a man who could be so many things at the same time and yet be a master of all his trades. A lion, yet a lamb. A master, yet a servant. A great teacher, yet a great student. Like the ancient tales in the holy book, our father, Prophet T.B. Joshua, was a true reflection of our Lord Jesus Christ for this generation and generations yet unborn. He exemplified the true meaning of living by the grace of God and living each day as if it were your last day. He never allowed his circumstances to dictate the direction of his life. He didn't wait for people to set an example for him. He simply acted. I continue to thank God Almighty for the short time, yet very memorable time I had with him on this earth as a disciple under his mentorship. He always said that nothing can keep us on cause like a deep love for the Lord. Indeed, he was so focused on his cause. I remember how many times I doubted if he were human, made of flesh and blood. I asked myself, how can one touch and pray for thousands of people on a Sunday service? Where did he get the strength to meet each of them in person after the service? Even after finishing meeting with them, he still went on to pray to his God well into the dead of the night until daybreak. What a force of nature he was. He never waited for tomorrow to accomplish what can be done today. And now, at just 57 years old, his, accom his, accomplish his accomplishments continue to echo all over the world as if he had lived for hundreds of years in our midst. His zeal, determination, and uncanny focus to achieve what he was called for are unmatched. Even upon his great achievement, he humbly took time out of his busy schedule to teach, interact, joke, and pray with us every day. As a father-in-law, Prophet T.B. Joshua taught me to believe in my dream and stand firm and fearless in the sight of challenges and hindrances that can arise in life, to simply let love lead, and that God takes unlikely people and puts them in his kingdom. Conclusively, Prophet T.B. Joshua was a trailblazer. His legacy still rose all over the world beyond tomorrow. He proved what he said, one life for Jesus is all I have, and one life for Jesus is so dear. Eshe Pupo Dadi, Simini Alafia, Thank you very much, Daddy. Rest in glory, your son, Brian Moshi. Thank you.